All right, hello there. This is Jesse Johnson from Tutoring with a Twist. Uh, and I just thought I would make a, a hopefully quick video. Um, again, mostly aimed at people who have, who have maybe already experienced this a little bit and who are, are you know, just hoping to, to refresh their knowledge. Um, a quick video explaining how to, uh, you know, how to foil out, you know, uh, these sorts of uh, multiplied binomials together and also how to uh, factor quadratic equations. Uh, these are some fancy terms, so let's uh, see exactly what I mean. Let's say we're trying to multiply together two things like this, two, two binomials like this. Well, that might look tough, right? Um, but let's think about this. We already know how to distribute uh, over parentheses. So for instance, if we've got something like seven times x minus five, right? What you can do is you can take the seven and insert it across these brackets here, and you would get 7x minus 35, right? Which is, you know, very, fairly easy, fairly straightforward, um, but gets a, a bit trickier and a little bit more out of hand looking at a situation like this. So what can we do? Well, let's say that we, let's pretend for a minute that we don't actually know what this is. So we'll just put a big black box over it, right? That's the there it is, there's the mystery. We don't know what's inside there, but we know it's being multiplied by x plus two, right? Well, just in the same way that we can distribute that seven across the x plus five, we can distribute this mystery black box across that x plus two. So what are we gonna get? Well, we'll get big mystery box times x plus two times that big mystery box, right? Just as before we are distributing across. Right? And now that we've done this, we can go back and say, well, hey, wait a minute, what was actually inside that mystery box? Oh, it was x minus three. So we'll put that in here. And likewise, we can put it in there, right? Now, suddenly we've got everything that we need to finish factoring this out. We can now factor out a second time, back the x across there and the two across there, right? x times x is x squared, x times negative three is negative three x, two times x, and two times negative three, right? But let's, you know, take a look for a minute and see if we can understand where this comes from, right? Let's sort of, you know, place these in different corners like this, right? Um, but, Actually, as a matter of fact, I think I can place this like that down there. So they're kind of in, they're kind of staggered around. You can you can see them all nicely. And let's see where this all comes from. These are three different ways of writing the same thing. Well, look at this. It looks like this x and that x combine to make x squared, right? So if you think about it, that x led to there, and this thing made that x minus three, right? So we've got that. Right. We've also got, let's take a look here. Looks like that ne this negative three got multiplied by that x, right? From the same reason that x turned out to be this x, and the negative three is the negative three in there. Continuing on this way, uh, hopefully the colors won't get too confusing, but we'll have this two combined with that x, right? Slightly different this time. That's uh, this two there and the x from the x minus three, but you can still see that it comes from the same place. And finally, I mean, we'll say, that we had negative three. Oh, I made a little mistake there. Sorry about that. It should be six. Hopefully somebody was shouting at the screen saying, no, please, you're doing it all wrong. Um, and yeah, that negative two there, right? <laughs> Looking at what we've got here, all right? Um, looks like this X and that X combined to make that X squared. So we might call that the first. After all, it is from the first term of each of these two binomials. Binomial, by the way, just means, you know, the, the something x plus or minus something in this context. Um, up next, look at this, right? We've got this negative three and that x combined to make this negative three. Oh, well, you know, that should make sense, right? We might call that the inside, right? That negative three, that x, they combine, you know, the inside. We've also got Right, this x and that two looks like the outside to me, as well as this negative three and that two. 
right? We'll call that last, right? Uh, this looks a little bit funny, but if you sort of rearrange it a little bit, you'll get the form that it's better known as. Here, let me just go ahead and shuffle this around a touch. And ta-da, you've got F-O-I-L, foil. First, that's the X and the X. Outside, that's that two and the X. Inside, that's that negative three X. And last, that's that negative six from the two and the three put together, right? But looking at this, maybe we're not quite done or we're not quite satisfied with what we've got. And why not? Well, because we can combine these two terms, right? This two X and that negative three X, they can combine together, right? If you have two of something and you subtract three of that thing, you end up with negative one. Oops, I want that to be purple. Negative x, right? And that's kind of like outside slash inside, combined together is that middle one, right? Uh, so if we want to, we don't actually have to do that whole distribution thing. We can just do uh, FOIL, FOIL, as quick as we want. Right, so come up with any old uh, pair of binomials on the spot, maybe 2x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 7, right? Just pull that out of my hat. Um, the x's combined, the first, we get 2x squared outside. That's that 2x and that 7. So we'll get 14x. Inside, that's that negative 3 and that x. And last, this negative 3 and the 7 will combine, make negative 21. And just like before, we'll combine like terms, this negative 14 and that negative three. They're gonna to come together and we're gonna end up with 11x, right? Okay, so we're almost there. Let's make one more little observation, right? Let's say we're looking at something um, where the x's don't have anything in front of them, right? There's nothing in front of the x's, right? So we've got you know, x minus five multiplied by x plus two, right? Well, real quick, immediately, we know what's the first thing gonna be? Well, it's gonna be x squared, right? That's gonna be these two x's multiplied together. And what's the last? Well, that's gonna be these two constant terms multiplied together, right? So you can go ahead and know immediately that you're gonna end up with a negative 10, because that's five times two, or negative five times two, rather. In the middle, you're gonna have the the insides and the outsides added together. So minus 5x plus 2x. Well, that's easy, right? You did a minus 5 from there, 2 from there. And you know, you know you're going to have to add them together. So you might as well jump straight to negative 3x. And you'll know that negative 3 is the sum of that negative 5 and that positive 2 there. Right? So we can do it like that even quicker. Right. If we if we're really in a rush, right, and we have two binomials where in both cases x is being multiplied by nothing out front, right? Let's say we've got x plus four and x plus three. Let's say start off strong with x squared. Add four and three together to get seven x. Multiply four and three to get twelve. Boom. Really quick and easy, right? And the beautiful thing about this is that it's so quick and so easy we can almost do it backwards. So let's say for instance, that you're looking at something like x squared plus five x plus six. Did I say almost? I mean, we absolutely can do this backwards. We know that we must've started off with something like this, right? x plus or minus something multiplied by x plus or minus something else, right? You know, whatever those two things are, they have to multiply together to be six and add together to be five. All right, so what I like to do is I like to get all the pairs of numbers that multiply to be six. That's going to be six and one and three and two. All right. Do six and one add together to be five? No, they do not. So we'll cross those off. Three and two do. So X plus three and X plus two. Now things get a little bit trickier if you're looking at other quadratic equations. Right? But for, for the most part, this is perfectly attainable. This is just fine. So, you know, and there's a there's a bit of a trick to it, right? Um, but for the most part, we can we can solve it without too much of a hitch. 
So let's say we had something like, I don't know, let's say x squared minus x plus, um, how about 42? Okay, so we know that we're gonna have something like x plus or minus something multiplied by x plus or minus something else. And we know that those two things are gonna to have to add up. Sorry, add, did I say, I, I meant to say multiply up to be 42, right? Here's some examples of things that multiply together to be 42. We've got one and 42, that's easy. We also got two and 21, it looks like. Um, I think we're gonna have, uh, let's see, that's gonna be, what's that? Three and 14, right? Or even six and seven. Right. We also know that we're going to want to pair that. Uh, oop, I made a terrible mistake. I meant to say that. Right. So we know that uh, we're looking at something like this. Right. And we're going to want them to uh, come out to be such that one is negative. Right. Because you need two negative numbers to make it positive. Right? So we want two numbers here where their difference is uh, negative one. Right. Obviously, these two won't work, neither will any of those. Six and seven are going to be what we're looking for. We know that one of them is going to have to be negative, so we'll make the larger one negative so that their sum is negative. Ta-da, you've done it beautifully. There is the way that you would factor out this equation. Hopefully, you'll do it a little bit more cautiously than I do. Um, right? You'll, you'll actually you know, come up with things much neater. That's the general idea. The, you know, the, the, the heart of it is just that you practice that a, you know, a dozen times, and at the end, you, you can kind of do it naturally. Now, why should I care? What's, what's the big deal about this? Well, first of all, if we were in a situation where let's say we had something like x squared minus x minus 42 over, all right, over x plus 6, right? it's hard for us to tell immediately. But if we convert that, we could get x plus 6 times x plus 7 over x plus 6. And we see instantly that these are going to cancel and we'll just be left with x plus 7. The other reason is that this is very good for finding the zeros of a quadratic equation. Right? So for instance, let's say that we have something like, um, I don't know, how about x minus seven, let's say, plus 10, let's say seven X, right? Something like that, right? We might say, well, what are the zeros, right? What are, what are, what are, what do we need to get X minus all that equals zero, right? Well, you know, this might help us a bit if we say we're to factor this, right? So, Multiples of 10 are either 1 and 10 or 2 and 5, right? Um, I think they're both going to be negative, right? Because they either need to both be negative or both be positive for their product to be positive. And I also think that um, they have to be negative because their sum is negative, right? So I think it's going to be 2 and 5 because those add together to be 7. So x minus 2, x minus 5 equals zero, All right? So we have now factored this quadratic equation just like that, right? Okay, we can take this a, a step farther. What does X have to be? Well, if I told you that two numbers, when you multiply them together, are equal to zero, right? You would get to know for free that at least one of them is zero, right? There's no way for you to multiply two numbers together and for their product to be zero unless one of them is zero. Right? Well, okay, so that means that either x minus two is zero or x minus five is zero. Okay, well, we might as well say that then either x equals two or x equals five. Both of these will have the desired effect, right? Bo both of these will get you to a situation where the, you know, the, these two binomials multiplied together is equal to zero. And by the way, that should not be greatly surprising to you because if you were to graph such a, a quadratic, right, you might have it like this. So you have two solutions, which is why we're not surprised that the equation has two solutions as well. 
So that's going to be it for today. I hope that was helpful. And hopefully I'll be I'll be seeing you soon next time you need a little bit of help.